All right. Hello, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Maybe put something in the chat if you can hear me. You're gonna have to like write in there, like it's in the cottage. Yeah, the I know, I'm trying to, cause it, yeah, I didn't recognize cottage studios. I'm putting right. stuff in. Hello, everyone. Okay. Oh, good, good. Thank you, Lana. Thank you. Appreciate that. So um, tonight, Rabbi McLashley is really, he's, he's wait, you know, can't wait to be here. So we're not going to start without him uh, tonight. But the Torah Parsha is uh, Parsha Kisavo. Um, so Kisavo, that is uh, Deuteronomy 26, 1. That's where it starts. Let's see. I need to check my text to see. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay, people are still joining. Good, good, good. Hello, hello. Did that work? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right. Hey, sit down. All right. All right. Thank you, honey. Hello. Okay. Good. Oh, hello. Here's Rabbi Ashley. All yeah. right. Just get my phone from Alan. Thank you. Hey, sit down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Center yourself, honey. <laughs> honey, I'm centered. It's okay. <laughs> My wife, center myself. Okay. Hi. There we go. Hello. Have a good meeting. Okay. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Hi. Hi. How are you? Add 10. Okay. And then, and great. All right. We have so many uh, people filtering in. Okay. Wonderful. Well, let's get started. Uh, we're being graced again with Rabbi McLashley. So, oh, do we have those cards? Did I take them out? I'm I took them out. I, did you get those cards yet? Yes, I did. It was uh, in the it was in my mailbox. It was they uh, in front of my house today. So, oh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. What, how did yeah, I, I enter the way? Okay. Uh, Looks like uh, someone else is entering the waiting room as me. I, 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 
I don't know how that is. How am I in the waiting room? Oh, Aaron has signed in as me. Rob Aaron is here. Okay. Let's see if we can. I have Rob sure. Mendy Gopin with me. Whoa. Wow. Lots of superstars. So, hello, hello, Rob Aaron. And hello, <laughs> Rabbi McLashley. And who's, ma, who's this? Mazel tov. Mazel tov. My name is Mendy. Hi, Mendy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I see you're a very suspicious person because you know my cousin. Of it, and he's pulling up a chair very close to you, and he's very we're, suspicious. Yeah, but actually, actually, Yermiahu, we're cousins. According to the <laughs> according to the uh, the family tree that you did, we're cousins through the Hyken family. Hmm. Oh, really? Yes. So we're all we're all related. Really my related. mother's side. Yeah. Oh. Well, neat. Wow. Well, welcome. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. So we just finished a shir that Rab Mendy was giving on Rosh Hashanah and the Mahzor and the different uh, customs, the Mincha Gim, uh, that we follow during the month of Elo leading up to Rosh Hashanah. It was very deep. And he was, I was challenging him. He was challenging me. We were going back and forth and... Baruch Hashem, we uh, we became closer to Hashem, both of us together. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Uh, yes. Are we starting now? Do we have everyone signed in? Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody yes. is is signing in. Is signed in. Yeah. So we we have a we have a minion. Yeah, we have yeah, a good. minion, and Ra Rabbi McLashley's here too. <laughs> we've got a we've got a, we we got a big minion. So we we're we're good to go. You want to start? Should we? You want to start the bracha? Sure. Go go ahead. Go you start. So, so we say a bracha before we learn Torah, because not everyone has uh, made, made the bracha. Bracha to Hashem, and Okin Melech Alam, Asher Bracha Banami Kola Amin, but Natamanu Etor Ato, Baracha to Hashem, Natin Hatara. Okay. Beautiful. Now we're ready to go. Hot ready. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're. We're at Kisambo. And I just want to make a point. I want to make. Uh, Rabbi McLaughlin also has some very interesting points you would like to make. He told me in advance that he's very excited to talk about some. We all we're going to leave room for everybody to chat, and I'm going to zip it tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm okay. going to zip it. Well, I'm I'm going to make one point. I'll make one <laughs> point. One, 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 and I'll I'm going to make one point. That's it. Oh, and let everyone finish making their points. I'm gonna. I'm <laughs> quiet. I'm quiet. Whoever wants to start can I'm start. My phone. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> Rock paper scissors. You want me to do a quick recap of what what yes. I talked to you on the phone today about about the uh uh you mean that I am? Did I say you made Shuba? You well, I oh sure. I'll what do, do a think? quick recap. Sure. So we were talking about, I said, <laughs> here's an element, the magic of the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, uh, Yemei Narayim, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. In the Gemara, it states, uh, and, and I'm going to say it in Hebrew, not to impress anyone with my mastery of Hebrew, because I know it in Hebrew, and I'll translate it in English. It, it's, uh, it says, Call you, uh, it, it says, Shikodim Yetzirah Tavalad, Nigazar al Hatipa Matehala Ashani. Before a person is even formed, there's a gazera passed on the well, uh passed on the person before birth, whether they're going to be wealthy or poor, strong or weak, da 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 da. And the point is uh that this gazera is Minashamayam. So we 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 Okay, fine. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to be an usher or an ani, if I'm going to be wealthy or if I'm poor, if I'm going to have so a what, what, what you're saying is that it's there's it, the Gemara says that there's predestination and that that <laughs> the things are predetermined, and then the question arises, of course, why should we bother even doing anything if it's we're going to be if it is what it is? Yeah. I mean, we we clap right now. Ask Hashem if not going to ask Hashem to be mabatim because they're kasho to to rescind the evil decrees. If the decree is minashemayim, 
who am I to override Hakadosh Baruch Hu? Okay. Uh, so the thing is, is that so the- so for those so 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 if you could for those who aren't understanding Hebrew and w- right. even when you say Hakadosh Baruch Hu, I okay. think there are people who may not who may not uh, who are watching who may not understand. How do we override? What is it that we can override the will of God, which is during the Yamim Narayim, if it's if it's a Gezerah Min Hashemayim, if it's a decree from heaven. Whether or not you're going to be wealthy or poor, whether you're going to have a pranasa, we said we we ask Hashem to inscribe uh, God to inscribe us b'sefer chayim in the book of life. It's already decided. It's it's minashemai. So there's an important principle here that we can learn, which really addresses the magic of the um, yomim narayim. The of changing uh, one's destiny. You mean? Being yeah. able to change one's destiny. Exactly. I see. So, and okay. what it is, it says, call bide shemayim puts me your shemayim. Everything's in the hands of heaven, except mm-hmm. the fear of heaven. So through yirat shemayim, the fear of heaven, through doing teshuva, uh, repentance, through our, uh, 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 through our actions, we can actually, that's why we have the power to be... It's- in Hebrew, they say Mabatha can say so go ahead. Yeah, can, can you can you just can you just just so be, because a lot of times when people hear fear of heaven, right. uh, the word fear from a Jewish standpoint is more of like the word of maybe awesome. Or, uh, it or means respect. good point. Right. Good point. Because, because, point. because because from the from a, a literal perspective, in the usage of fear is something of like, oh, I'm so scared. I'm I'm concerned that I'm going to be hurt or crushed. Right. But but yeah. fear it's, when we say yirat shemaim and literally what it means fear fear of God, it means it means like a respect. Yes, it's right? an it's an awe. Yeah. It is like right. this thing right. is right. so awesome. So let's just so, and and it's about feeling you know the vastness and feeling small and feeling vulnerable and feeling safe yes uh, at the same time so there's I, more to that word yeah just that phrase coming from a christian background when you said fear of heaven made me think of how christianity is fear-based and it yeah we don't think of, of it that way yeah, yeah. No. it's the threat of hell that uh, keeps you in check yeah <laughs> a good point and and you know I, I want to clarify you know what the, 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 the actually the word in Hebrew for fear uh, yira does not exactly a, a better word for fear would be pachad or loma pachad claw like to, to be fearful. This mm-hmm. means exactly what what was addressed. It means more like awe. It means a sense of uh, it's not the word fear because fear has all these negative connotations that really isn't what Yerat Shemaya means. It means that to be in awe of and to respect the sovereignty of the Almighty and, and not fear. Actually, in, in, in Judaism, it teaches that Ahavat Hashem, love of Hashem, is a higher mm-hmm. level. So what is Ahavat? Can you, can you can just explain? Ahavat is love. Is love of Hashem, mm-hmm. love of God, is on mm-hmm. a higher madrig, a higher spiritual level than fear of Hashem. So, you know, that's basically... Um, you know, uh, a, a, a person. Uh, so, yeah, sure, a, a person who just does something because they're afraid they're going to get punished. Exactly, is, is not, down here. They're at a not, lower vibration. Okay, exactly. And and a then for people who are 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 really in love with God, have on awe and want to approach the holiness of God, they're on the the higher vibration. The the harmonization, the dev- the pathway to devakut and fusion with this God. Exactly. I know Aaron is cracking up. Yeah, I know. So, we, so uh, during the Aseret Yemei Tshuva, during the 10 days of repentance, we are able, we ask God to be mavatel, to negate, mavatel is to negate, gezerot kasho, evil decrees. Oh, and, yes. the question, and the question is, how can we ask God to be Mavato Gezerat Kashot? We ask Hashem for Parnasa Tova, a, a livelihood, a good, a, you know, that Hashem should, in other words, give us a, 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 a livelihood. 
these things have already been decided, right? Right. So what's the bother? What's the point is why bother even infiltrating or fraying or if all of these things have been decided? And that's because of what you're saying is during a certain time period, there's some flexibility. Kind of like brainstorming. So this is really the essence of, like I said, the magic of the Yamim Narayim, that you can actually be, in Hebrew, it would be Meshana Chuki Ateba. You would change the laws of nature. You're actually changing the decree from heaven. If God, if Hashem, if the Almighty decided, hey, you know what, Rabbi McLashley, you're going to be, you're going to be poor. You're not going to make money this year. Oh my God. Whatever that I can actually change that. During this period of time, there, there, there's a certain koyach or a certain energy to this time period that enables us, because it says, kol bide shemayim, everything is in the hands of heaven, chutz mi yurek shemayim, outside or with the exception of the fear of heaven. Now, fear, as, as it was alluded to before, we're not talking about fear, trembling, terror, this and that, but it's awe, it's respect. It's reverence for. It's not fear in the negative sense of the word. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying. Leah, Leah's making me laugh because okay. I'm. I'm. I'm I, I, he I, wants I, to talk I, so, bad. so bad. So <laughs> bad. Go ahead. And the reason <laughs> is that earlier tonight, earlier tonight, remember we have book club preceding this, and we read in book club Jewish fairy tales and fables by aunt naomi and the the penultimate story in that book is called the coins of elijah and there's a the story is a family is about a family who who is poor you know well they're first they're very pious people they give to charity all the time then uh tragedy befalls them they are poor and a stranger comes from nowhere Elijah and says, listen, I'm going to make you very wealthy. All right. And, but you only have an opportunity to do it for six years. You can be wealthy for six years. That's it. Do you want the wealth right now? Or do you want it later? You tell me, let me know. I'll do it. All right. And he goes back and tells his wife, the wife discusses it. They discuss it. She says right now, because if you give us the money right now, then we can give all the money away and, and 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 we can help many 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 people as opposed to like just keeping it for ourselves on our deathbed or whatever and that's what they do they end up now the the agreement they have to make an agreement with the guy that at the end of the six years they're going to give him his money back whatever the money that he loans them back and that's it then they go back to being poor that's the end and done so sure enough six years later Elijah shows up again says what's going on uh give me back my money and the wife has got accounts receivable and she's noted like what she spent on herself and what she spent on everybody else and they gave so much to charity that they discussed it with elijah and he says you know what you are a wonderful um keeper of the of this uh of, of this treasure and you know you're very responsible with it and so therefore you can you can keep it and the agreement is broken on elijah because of the charitable acts by the couple right and they change their destiny he tells them straight up it's their destiny that this is gonna happen and they change it this is that story we say tzedakah matzah, uh, tzedakah my mother. That it's, it's a charity can save a person from death. Even I mean, you know. So the the, the concept of uh, you know uh, of that. Uh, it's also important to note that I'm no I'm no maven with this this young lady here who had mentioned to me about uh, uh, you know coming from a Christian background. I'm no maven on Christian belief, but what I understand is that. Uh, having come up as as a Shomer Mitzvot, I would, would look at the situation in Christianity from my understanding that whatever God ordains or whatever God decrees for us, uh, from a Christian perspective, you're just supposed to accept it. Okay, that's it. I mean, if I suffer, I'm supposed to suffer. If I'm if I'm having challenges, I'm supposed to have these challenges. And from a Jewish perspective, it's an interactive relationship with God. So it's like if God decrees something, 
we don't have to just sit back and say, well, you know, hey, you know. Well, there's, there's plenty of times where there's plenty of times in the Bible. You and I have pointed this out many times. There's plenty of times in the Bible where Moses, on behalf of the, the children of Israel, uh, negotiates with God. Right. And changes his mind. And Avram Avinu by Siddham and Gemara, and it goes on and on and on and on. I mean, I could point out countless examples where we argue with, uh, the, where we argue with God uh, to, you know, and and so the con the concept is, I, I mean, I would imagine from the perspective, uh, because I, 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 I also talk to students who are from, not from Jewish backgrounds, from a Christian perspective, it sounds outrageous. Who are you to argue with God? Well, the point <laughs> is, is that God wants us sometimes to argue with him. That's why we're Jews. Jews. God, yeah. That's the challenge. <laughs> that that God, is, God is like setting it up, saying, hey, you know what? I don't want a bunch of, I don't want a bunch of yes men. I don't want just yeah. somebody to go along. So, I want someone to stand up. Mm -hmm. to stand up for what's right even if you're standing up even if you're standing up for what's right against the almighty god says yeah. you know what that's what i expect from you all right aaron aaron, aaron okay. wants to, so, has a comment so, here. so in in our in our class earlier today i was discussing this too there's there's a uh, in the in the muslim religion it's about uh, to be a muslim is to submit it's submission and when I've spoken with my Muslim friends and we're comparing Judaism and, and Islam, they don't understand this concept of a covenant. Now, I think it, to me, when uh, I'm reading the Torah and, and Abraham becomes the first Jew, there's a covenant that's made. A covenant is not a cov A covenant is, an, is, is like an agreement between two parties. Mm -hmm. There's an agreement. A covenant is a, like a contract. And then it's and then it's uh, the covenant is then um, there is like a certain uh, uh, ceremony that occurs to that to fulfill this covenant to to recognize the existence of the covenant. So there is like this relationship. the The difference is the Jew has a relationship with Hashem, with their Maker, as opposed to simply the relationship being submission. That's why we pray. I mean, that's the whole purpose of prayer is to cry out. And especially we were talking about this in our class. The shofar represents the cry of the soul to cry out yes. to Hashem. Mm -hmm. And even the name Yisrael, if you break it down into its subparts, it means he who struggles with God. Mm -hmm. And Yisrael, we are B'nai Yisrael, sons of Yisrael, sons of those who struggle with God. It's it's mm -hmm. our essence. It's our being. It's our religion to go ahead and question, and that's why we continued. And I think, in my opinion, that's why we continue to exist today, mm -hmm. because we do struggle, and because we continue to debate. And in upon generation upon generation, by debate, the Torah is not a static uh, book. It's not. It's not just uh, preserved in history in a context, in a historical context that exists 2,000 years the ago. the It continues to grow with us, and it applies to every generation. It applies to the generations before us, the generations now, and it will apply to the generations in the future. It's well, for us to debate and understand its application <clears throat> as we move on in our, in our lives. And it's our struggle with God to try and be closer to God and understand God. So, do you, do you remember last week? You, you and I had this discussion about Deuteronomy twenty-two five, which is a man should dress like a woman and wouldn't and hug us not like a man. And what we ended up coming to was a, a current, more modern interpretation was about that you should really reflect your true self inside and out, whatever that being is you okay, need to be that, your authentic self be your, be your authentic, authentic self. self don't and be so, something you're not don't be something yes. you're not and so that well yes be your authentic self and so that i would like to point out and relate it to just a segment of tonight's parsha which i discussed earlier uh with with rabbi mclashley which is and this is the only point this was the big point that i wanted to make and and then, and then, really, I promise. After I make it, I will be quiet until the end. Um, which, which is that 
you know, we're, we, the, there, there are 12 in this Parsha. There are 12 sins, okay, that warrant being cursed. And I was trying to think of them of in relationship to the other because for the most part, they're seemingly disparate things. Some of them are very similar, but some of them are very, very disparate. And I was trying to look at what a common thread is between all of them. And the common thread between all of them was secrecy that they are done with secrecy. And then I turned around and I read that Rashbi noticed the same thing and made the same commentary that these things were done in secrecy. And I, there was one part that I wanted to talk, just make, which well, what do you mean? The, can you, can you, can, can you develop that further? Like the, the, the sins that are done in secrecy? Well, I will develop it further. Like the very okay. first one is because I don't see that. I see accursed is the man who makes a graven molten image or uh -huh. abomination of Hashem. So someone uh -huh. who makes okay. and so so, someone who and makes so an idol, graven or they molten could do that publicly. No, it's it says graven or molten image, uh, molten image in secret. You shouldn't oh, make. You're right. And then place it in secret. Okay. And place it in secret so you can make a graven image. You can't make it. And in, in secret. I would like this to point an interesting point, uh, Doctor. Uh, the difference between Geneva and Gazelle. Which is uh, the sin. Look at Geneva, they both mean stealing. Okay. Geneva, Lotignova is one of the Asarata de Not to that. steal. Now, there's a distinction between, Gene in, in Judaism, there's a distinction between Geneva and Gezela. Geneva is stealing, let's say, under the cover of night. Gezela is someone who brazenly steals during the light of day. So you're saying, well, you know, someone who, who brazenly steals in the light of day, but the point is the person who steals in secret is actually... It, 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 it's in some sense a worse Aveda because they're they're showing they fear human beings, but they don't fear God. The the goslin, the person who steals brazenly, openly, he's showing, hey, you know what? I don't fear God or man. But the person who's who, who's who's the Ganif, he fears <laughs> man, but not but not God. Well, yes, maybe yes, God right. might not be seeing this. You know, God might not have his. Uh, you know, he, he 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 might not have his surveillance equipment in place. I can get away with it. <laughs> you know? So that that's uh, another point. But one point that I wanted to address, which was so interesting, that uh, your cousin addressed, was the concept of covenant. And in in Hebrew, and this illustrates another essential difference, I think, between the way we understand the relationship between God and man, between Judaism and uh, the Christian belief. That in, in, in Christianity, humans are, we are, you know, we're considered in, in, in the Christian belief to have a more passive role, I think. And I might be mistaken, this young lady could, could correct me if I am, but I think would have a more passive role. In Judaism, like when we say the bracha, what is the real covenant is the Brit Milah. That's the covenant, the Brit. The, the circumcision, the Brit Milah is the covenant that, that symbolize, that, that's for the individual. For the community, the Kehila, it's the Pesach Seder. That's what defines as a, as a community. Yes, yes. But the thing is that, that's interesting is that in, in Judaism, oh, the right. covenant, a person is not born with a Brit Milah. He's not born, he's not born circumcised. We have to do it. In other words, we have to complete, we have to complete God's creation. We have to complete ourselves. We by th through the Brit Milah. I mean, God could. Hey, you know what? I'm just going to make. I'm going to. You're going to be born. You're going to be born. You're not going to need a circumcision. But the idea is, is that we have to. We have to have a moil do the circumcision to uh, to basically perfect or complete his creation. What he started. And in Judaism, we're we're kind of it's it's kind of like what we call shitfus in in Hebrew. It, 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 it's a partnership. That's the word I'm looking for. It's a partnership between yep. God and man in in elevating and to canolum and elevating his creation. It's a partnership. It's not passivity. It's not just okay, fine. You know, 
And that was the distinction between Noach and Abram. Noach, the, you know, the word tamim, which is complete or whole, however you want to translate, is only used by two people. It's used other times, but it's only used to refer to two people in the entire Torah. And the two people it's used to refer to is Noach and Abram. No, they both fulfilled God's will perfectly. They were called tamim. Noach wasn't Jewish, but he was a servant of God. He walked Badar Hashem in the ways of God. And he was, hey, God said, you know what? Noach, I'm, you're good with me. And in his zechut, the, the world was saved, right? Through Noach. But the, the difference is, Abraham took it one step further to be more proactive. In, in Hebrew, in, in a book we call Pirkei Avot, which means Ethics of Our Fathers, there's a statement, Bamakom she'ein anashim, at a place where no one is, well, literally in a place where no one's a man, but speaking in the tongue of the time. In a place where no one's behaving like a human being, Bamakom she'ein anashim, li <laughs> yodish. You have to strive to be a human being. You have to strive to do the right thing. So the question arises, the rabbis asked, was Noach a tzaddik, even in his time or only in his time? In other words, was he a tzaddik even in his time? He was surrounded by, during the, the, the Dor HaMabul, the generation of the flood, he was surrounded by Hamas. Yes. And Hamas actually <laughs> means lawless, okay? So, uh, uh, you know. It, so it, can, we, can, we, can, we, can we just, yeah. can, can we put a pin on that for a second? So okay, sure, Rabbi sure, Mendy can, can feel that. that there's, a, there's, a, there's the beginning of the Parsha of Noah actually explains that 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 answer so i don't know i'm the labavish Rebbe has a, a great they use a great term for it they call it noah was what we call a tzaddik in pelts so what does a tzaddik in pelts mean that's a tzaddik a holy man a righteous man he's he's covered in pelts he's warm mm. but he himself is warm he's sheltered he's doing good the world around him is freezing everybody else is suffering Noah saved himself. He was good, but he was good by himself. He didn't look out for the world around him. He didn't try to bring everybody else back to get everybody to, to, to return to God. Didn't he, didn't he warn? But he, didn't warned he warned them. them. Warned them. He warned them. He was passive. Avram was active. Right. As a, you know, like, like proselytizing as opposed, and as, as opposed to just letting people know and letting them do their thing free will uh, what would what would be the difference between yona and then and then noah because it, because it was the same thing yona jonah was yeah. commanded by hashem to warn the people in Nineveh to to repent noah also was warned well wasn't he was, that there would be a flood and that people should repent so what is is there a connection between yona and and noah that is different aside from the, what we already have agreed. We've agreed Abraham takes a proactive approach to, to proselytize, right? Or to, to, to convert people, to bring people to Hashem, whereas convert the others are... Convert is a, is a, would be a strong term well, for really, Judaism. But, but, it, but it was to bring people to the recognition to know God, to know God, to know God's presence. But that is... But that is different. Not that, to make that, that that Jews, necessarily. Well, sure. Well, let's not... Well, first it's of all, it's let's not, all not be us. okay. Okay, let's not well, all we're, all we're 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 escaping the judgment of the idea. Yeah, yeah, we're, of we're, this conversion. is non-judgmental. It's so, non-judgmental. So this, this is a world. Your religion and become closer to God for reasons. Yes. Or, you know, it's just conversion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is because okay. you have everyone. Uh, everyone is praying to idols. Everyone's praying to nature, and Abraham is saying, "There's one God." And there's one God that the unif that's a unification of everything. Everything is connected. Everything is one. And I'm telling you, stop worshiping the sun. Come here, have something to eat, and I'll tell you about it. And he gained followers from this, from his kindness, from the from the way he was able to explain and bring people in. He was converting people. This is a good thing. My understanding is that conversion, active conversion, stopped when Christianity began. Because there, because there became too much of a, uh, a clash between now there's a competition between Jews and Christians for, for converting. And so Jews at that point said, historically, 
There's actually we're, uh, we're we're okay. We're okay. We we got our members. There's a famous I forget where it says it, but it says that God put created the world and put the Jewish people in the world to add in 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 converts. Uh, uh, to, and so we say Gemara that Marco. God made it. It's in Gemara Mako. In Gemara, Gemara and Makos. Yeah. So he made an investment. See, thankfully, says, we have someone who knows something here. <laughs> Thank God. Two, two people. He made two God rabbis. made an investment. He made it. He made an investment in the world. Where do I have it? I have it written down somewhere. God made an investment in the world, and and we're not returning on it. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, what do, we're what not do, we're not converting anybody. We you, say we say in uh, Avinu Malkinu Harim Karen Yisrael Amecha, raise the glory of of the the Jews, your nation. Why do we use the word Karen? We could use Hod. We could use Kavod. We could use another term that uh, represents glory or honor. Why do we need to use the word Karen? Because we're asking God. It's it's too much. We've been in in exile for too much. If you, if you leave your investment in too long and it's not returning anything, just take us out already. It's a, it's a begging. It's a vinum al we're, we're begging God, take us out. <laughs> okay. We're given, we've, we've given up on the... On the we on we the no longer want to be the chosen people. We choose someone else. No, we want to be the chosen people, but we don't... <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting thing though in Gemara Makot it says one of the reasons that Klal Yisrael is in Galut is to be Makabal Garam it says it beferish in, in, really in, it says it clearly yeah. really really so then why so then why so then why aren't we doing this why is it not the practice I think part of it was what happened have when to, we were in power question. I'm going to have to look that up yes so, so why so so why when we when the Jews were in power, people would connect to would would fall in line with the Jewish people for the wrong reasons. And all of that caused further divisiveness within the Jewish people. When people were part of the Jewish nation, but they weren't really aligned with the Jewish values. Each time this happened, we've had issues with it. We've had the Arab Rav, the mixed multitude who joined the Jews from Egypt. We had the Givonim who joined the Jews. They were one of the nations living in, in Canaan, and they tricked their way into the Jewish people. So you're, say, so you're saying the they, 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 weren't, they weren't joining because... They were joining because of the right reasons. Some, they were joining because they thought it was the, the right, the popular thing to do. They were right. joining was, the party that people, was popular. For some people, it because it was popular. The winner. For some people, yeah. it was because when it was the safety team. thing. The Givonim did it for safety. They didn't want to get, they didn't want to get murdered. So that's in Tanchum Lech Lecha. It says that uh, actually, though, the Geret Tzedek who comes to the... And, and despite the name Rabbi David O'Reilly McLashley, I am a born Jew. Okay? <laughs> Orthodox <laughs> Shomer Mitzvot. Went to Yeshiva eight years. Da, 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 da. But, uh, you know, the, the point is, is that the point that was made in Tanchum Lech Lecha, it says that the Geret Tzedek is on a higher level than I am, or he is, or a born Jew is. The, the person who converts is on a higher level because they come without the constraining. The Almighty, it says, and, and there's a lot of explanations, but suspended a mountain over our head at Har Sinai and said, you know, uh, but there's a lot of different explanations about that. But I just wanted to, 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 to let everyone know that uh, the person who is Metgayer, who converts L'shem Mitzvah, L'shem Shemayim, for the right reason, uh, they occupy the, hi the highest plane in, in Judaism. Uh, Rabbi Akiva, uh, it, it was called in the Gemara, Rabbi Akiva Hager. Whether he was a Ger or descended from Gerim, there are different opinions, but he became Rosh Lachachamim, the head of the sages. Uh, Root was a Moabitess. She converted to Judaism. From her comes King David. From King well, from Dan Melech will come Mashiach. We don't so, even have to look that far, though. All we have to look to is Abraham. Abraham, Abraham Avinu, of Avinu, course. The first and his father Jew, was Terach. The first Jew is a convert. Right. The first right, Jew. Sure. Right. Yes, of course. And Ruth and, you yeah. know, right. And, and Zipporah, I've already pointed that out. And, uh, 
who just he basically converts just by saying your god is now my god so that's i'm not even you know uh i i don't know what the whole song it dance is but uh, you know about about it but all right i mean it, it, you know uh, you just walk and lock step and do things that you're supposed to do and act, walk and talk and behave like a Jew. And since then you are a Jew. So there you go. And it's not such a big, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm very open about that, but the, the non, the, the issue about the process has, I just think has been traditions because we, you know, it's a longstanding tradition that people should come to Judaism out of free will. And, and yeah. that, it, and, and it's it's just like Noah telling everybody, hey, this is what I do. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. You can come. You can not come. Up to you. <laughs> up to you. Whatever. But this is what I'm doing. Zadik in pelts. Just what right. you said. Zadik in pelts. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, he spoke, uh, you know, and that's what I was going to get to, that, that Avram was proactive. Noah was passive. And that was the machlok at the dispute. Was he a tzaddik even in his time or only in his time? Because he was surrounded by Hamas, lawlessness. He was surrounded by, by lawlessness. So, you know, by contrast to the people around him, he would be he'd like a big tzaddik. Yeah. Right, but sure. In the is, land of the blind, right. the one eyed man is king. So he is, right. seems much more holy than everybody right. else. Right, he would see, but, 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 but conversely, you can argue the other point. It's much more difficult to be a tzaddik when yeah. you're surrounded by pious people, of, uh, you know, a, a bunch of lawless, immoral, yeah. amoral, whatever, you know. Look, it, it's, 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 it's easier yeah, yeah, to be a tzaddik and B'nai Brock than it is in Hollywood. Okay? That there's a debate, but I don't think there's a debate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's sure. easier but to be a tzaddik you if you're living in Jerusalem or B'nai yeah. Brock than if you're living in, uh, you know, you're living in Hollywood. So it's, uh, you know. Not to say that there aren't Sadiq and living in Hollywood. <laughs> uh, only thirty-two. The, the other, the other four are. Uh, yeah, the the Lama <laughs> Govniks, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know. Hey. All right. So, so we're gonna get to Parsha. <laughs> you want to start? Sure. <laughs> Let's Go start the Parsha, huh? Hanaki Tava. I think that's the Parsha. It is. You want to start? Uh, but yeah, well, so there was something that that uh, caught my eye. I, I know that you wanted to, uh, you jumped right to the curses. Rab Mendy, he pointed out that the the curses started, there was like a significance of the number of seven. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. That that appears throughout this. That's going away from what I want to talk about, but maybe we can maybe we can develop that further. What what we, what did you observe? So let's just talk about an observation. We don't even have it's to talk about a my, conclusion. My yeah, okay, but but just an observ observation. We don't even have to, and let's just kind of flesh it out. I I didn't get into it with Aaron. We didn't we didn't we didn't flesh it out. What I'd like to say about this parsha and about specifically the curses is that when they read it in the in the in the in the Torah and the congregation. It, the the Bal Korah, the person reading the Torah, he's the one who has to get the Aliyah. He's the one who goes up to make the blessing by the Torah for that Aliyah, for that portion. And he does not get called up because we don't call somebody up to get the curses. And oh. if the Bal Korah is a, is a Levite or a Kohen, so he can't get called up for the Aliyah number six, so somebody just walks up and takes it. Right. And, and, and they, I always and they like to walk it quietly, up. right? They when they read it in the Torah, they say it quietly. But the Quiet. blessings are made regular. You see, whoever goes up to make the blessings, I like to go up to make the blessings. But if it's an option, if the Balkor is a Levite or a Kohen, I like to go up. And the reason I like to go up is because they say a story that the 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 second Chabad Rebbe, the Mittel Rebbe, when he was younger. One year, his father was away. His father used to normally read the Torah. And he was once away for that Shabbos. And he heard the curses, and he got very ill. And he was ill. There was a question whether he was able to fast on the, the day of repentance, on the day of Yom Kippur. Yes. And they asked him, what happened? He got better, thank God. But they asked him, what happened that you got so sick? You hear it every year. What, you, you just heard the curses for the first time? And he said, when my father says them, I don't hear curses. I hear blessings. 
And so I know that even though it looks like the harshest thing you can ever hear, and it's coming from God, how is this possible? I thought we have a loving, kind relationship with God. We're in the month of El, right before Rosh Hashanah. God, it's the month of mercy. We have a loving relationship with God. Ani ladodi vadodi li. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me. God is everything. We love God. How could there be such curses? I know there's blessings within them. I know there's hidden blessings. I know that this exile is for a purpose. Being in this world is for a purpose, and it's for a beautiful purpose, and we're going to make this world a better place. That's what I have to say about the curses. That's what I have to say about number seven. Everything's in the, the order of, of seven. It's because seven is transformation. Seven is going through all our attributes, and we're going to go through all of them. We're going to transform all of them. It looks like curses when we step into this world, and we're going to transform it all. We're going to do a great job. We're going to have a great year, and we're going to... We're going to bring Mashiach. Amen. So what do you mean the seven attributes? So what do you mean? We have our, our yes. seven um, emotional faculties. And that's what we need to work on the most. That we have our, our natural inclinations. And we have the way we know we're supposed to behave. So we need yes. to use our mind. Our, our Chachma, Bina, and Das. Our knowledge, our intellect. We have to use that to transform our emotional side. We have to take our godly soul, transform our animal soul. We have to take this physical material plane and transform it. That's represented by the number seven, seven days of creation. Seven is, is, is in, in, in everything. And it could look material and it could look physical, but there's so much rich divine inspiration, spirituality hidden right underneath the surface. All you gotta do is pay attention. That's all I got. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> it's welcome. That's a lifetime. That's terrific. What do you mean? Yeah, that's a lifetime. Are you kidding me? Yeah. If that's all you got, you, you did it. You I did it. Yeah. What you alluded to, the Nefesh Halotis and the Nefesh Abahamit. The Nefesh Halotis, our godly nature, and the Nefesh Abahamit, our animal nature. And you're right, because, you know... The Masib Reishis, seven days, right? Seven days of creation. So we say, that on seven, really, seven days of creation? Wait a minute. We talk about the Masib Reishis, seven days of creation. Wait a minute. God created on six days. On the seventh day, God didn't create anything. And I always counter that, say, no, Hashem did create something on the seventh day. He created, he created rest, the cessation of work. That is the sanctity. That is the sanctity of the Shabbat, is that, you know, that in itself is a creation. The idea of, of, of inaction, <laughs> the, the concept of inaction, that we can rest, we can withdraw from exerting our will on the, on the world around us, is also bringing something new into being. And like you said earlier, what you were both discussing about the covenant and then about shutvus, about being in a partnership with God, we see that by uh, Shabbos, Friday night, we, after the prayers, we say the verses that discuss the completion of creation. And we say, by saying these verses, you are testifying that it is true to the world. And that's why if you said it alone, if you weren't praying with a quorum, with a minion in, in the synagogue, you should find somebody else to say it with. Because when we testify, we testify as two. And it says, by testifying about this, we become partners in creation. We become partners in creation by testifying on Friday nights. We become partners in creation when we bring new life into the world. And we become partners in creation when we transform this physical plane. Very good. Absolutely. That's something that, you know, I didn't come up. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't. Uh, my connection with Hasidus and Chabad occurred much later in life. Uh, but, you know, my uh, as I started learning the Sikhs of the Rebbe, and the idea of, you know, the, 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 the Rebbe was very proactive in his outreach to all people. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't just confined to, to, to the Jewish people. He, his outreach was to all people uh, to, be, to, fulfill our, to fulfill the role of being mamlechet kohanim, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, how did, would you translate it? A, 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 a nation of priests. Um, in the sense of, of guiding people, even down to saying, no, we have an obligation to teach the 
Sheva Mitzvah Noach, the seven commandments given to Noach. We have an obligation to be Makarev. Everyone, God is open to everyone. It doesn't make any difference. Jewish, not Jewish. We don't have this concept in Judaism that if you're not, you know, if, if you don't belong to our club, you can't have a relationship with God. We well, hope- yeah, I mean, that's we've, we've discussed that. Like God speaks to Pharaoh, right? Right. Not even Jewish. Pharaoh has to call in someone else. But God exactly. speaks to the sends the message to someone who's not even Jewish. Yeah. And a Job is one of the <laughs> Jewish the, the, the one of the He's Gentile the prophets, point. right? Yeah, right. Really good. Okay. Yeah. It was well, a pleasure meeting everybody. Thank Phenomenal you for coming. Doc, Rabbi McClashley. Aaron's cousin, Dr. Weiss. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. That is my pleasure. Well, it was very enjoyable. (laughs) See, we successfully scared another one off. (laughs) (laughs) He'll never be back. (laughs) I I saw I I saw you guys a little fight broke out when 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 I said in secret. What? When you said in secret a fight, a fight near the no. When out? I said when I said the thing about the graven image, it, it, yeah. it says and place yeah, it does. in it secret. Does. At the end of the list, it says in secret. But I disagree with you about the other ones. The other ones <laughs> can be public. Doesn't Another say one? public is not allowed. Hey, well, your 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 premise was that they were all something in secret. But but I guess anything could be done in secret. But the other ones not necessarily have to be done in secret, so. No, but there you yeah, no, think... certainly wasn't the secret, was it? <laughs> the Chet yeah. that was well, done before Hesia. Barabim, yeah. That was done, I mean, Barabim. It was done in front of everyone. Yeah. But, but, okay, so, so can we get to the... Oh, I just want to discuss before, because we're, we're get, running low on time here. Uh, to me... The, the the part that stood out to me was right at the end of the Parsha. Okay, so we have a Parsha that's filled, and it's a very interesting Parsha because it's it's like a list. It's it's these big block paragraphs with no breaks from them, and it's a list and lists and lists, and then we get to the end of the Parsha. And Moshe, he's, it says, Moshe summoned all of Israel and said to them, so number one, where was everyone before? <laughs> okay. So were they were they somewhere else? And then now all of a sudden he summons them. And then he says, You have seen everything that Hashem did before your eyes in the land of Mitzrayim, to Paro, to all his servants, to all his land. The great trials your eyes beheld. You saw everything, the great signs and wonders. And I've always said that the whole idea of the Exodus was really, it was not for the Egyptians because the Egyptians were not going to be uh, here forever. This, the whole story and the whole purpose of the Exodus and all the plagues and the signs and wonders were for the Jewish people. It was for us because we were going to be here today discussing it. So it was for us, but why? I let, he continues, I led you for 40 days in the wilderness. Your garments did not wear out from you. Your shoes did not wear out from your feet. Bread you did not eat. Wine and intoxicants you did not drink. So that you should know that I am Hashem your God. Then you arrived at the place. Sihon, king of Heshbon, Og, king of Bashan, went out toward the battle. We we took, yeah, we we won the battle. And we smote them. We took their land and gave it to as an inheritance, you shall observe the words of the covenant you shall perform this, so you shall succeed in all that you do. Now, the basis, in, and I've always advocated on, on this point, is that the basis of the entire Torah is, is emuna and bitachon. It's just like the belief in Hashem. There's a reiteration here of everything that the Jewish people have seen and Moshe is saying, look, you've seen it with your own very eyes. You've seen the miracles. Now it's time for you to absorb this and believe. 
And this has been the struggle, like the whole story. <laughs> this whole Dang story enough, is a struggle. Already. <laughs> uh, right, the whole story is a struggle, right? It, there's 42 stops. Everyone is not believing. Everyone is questioning. Why? We, we, we liked it in Egypt. Why did you bring us out here? We can't go in. The, the, there are giants living in the land. I mean, just go on and on and on and on. And find Moshe's to think, come on, guys. <laughs> Get with the program. Stop yeah, I mean, it, it's it's been 40 years. <laughs> 40 years. And so maybe maybe there's something. What about this? Think about this. Maybe in our own lives, I mean, um, there are different epochs, like in our own evolution as 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 human beings. I know in in India, they have these concepts of evolution in epochs in one's life. When you're in your up to your 20s, you do one thing. If you're 20s to your 40s, you do another thing. Your 40s to your 60s, you do another thing. Your 60s and up, you do something else. What if this is what if this is hinting at the fact that it may take 40 years of your life to get to a point where you've experienced life enough and you should be able to see Hashem. You should be able to see the signs and wonders around you. You should be mature enough to have experienced life to be able to recognize the glory of Hashem everywhere you go. And I just I just throw that out there. What if this is, what if there's some significance to that? Hmm. I, 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 I would have definitely agree. I would definitely agree. It's hard as a 10 year old mm -hmm. to, to recognize, unless you're very special to, to have the same type of Amuna because you don't have the life experience as a 40 year old to have the active oh. life experience to recognize the Hashem's guidance and, uh, yeah. in your life. Well, right now, sure. My 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 eldest is is about to turn twenty one, and for him, life is he's indestructible, man. You know, it's he's on this, you know, and he hasn't had uh, the 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 struggle yet, and so he's he thinks of himself as a grown man. But I know, in my heart, is my heart as, as much as I love him. There's more growing to be done, and that only is gonna that will continue throughout life. <laughs> Absolutely. And someone made some uh, a nice comment. Yes. Yeah. Uh, someone says uh, uh, Marisol says uh, some Native Americans believe one is is considered only to be an adult at age fifty two. Okay. <laughs> well, there you go. I would. I would. I would. I kind of. I kind of uh, agree. <laughs> Finally grew up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, we're only. So yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, so it's just interesting how there's the, the Torah and we see this. It's, it's where it's punctuated with these with these reviews. Moshe does these reviews and says, you got it. You got it. Do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> You get it now. You get it now. And and we can look at this from, you know, a literal sense. And then we can look at this from a more uh, esoteric uh, perspective and say, how does this apply to us now? OK, so we, we didn't see these things. But in our lives, do we see the miracles in our lives? Do we recognize the miracles in our lives? While we may not be in a desert and we may not be getting money, the fact that we do have money, the fact that we do have food is coming from Hashem, and that's the lesson. Have we gotten the lesson yet? So is Have it is it really it? Moshe Rabbeinu, or is it Moshe the Yenta? You got it yet? You got it yet? Did you take the sweater yet? Did you do it yet? <laughs> Did you yeah. get it? You got yeah. the lesson? <clears throat> and what yeah. happens? And what happens when you don't get the lesson? You yeah. know, there's, there, there's, there's clear consequences. It, it, it's clear that there are consequences when you don't get the lesson. Yep. Yep. That seems like a wonderful note. I think we should end on maybe. Uh, well, Coming perhaps, up. I don't know, Rabbi Kupferman, do, would you mind if uh, we take a little tour of, of what you're doing here? Is that okay? Oh. Yeah. So, Rab, uh, we have a Rab Kupferman here is uh, he's inspecting mezuzot and tefillin. He's a sofair. 
Uh, and uh, so I don't know if you could give us a little tour, a quick tour. Oh, oh God, that would be more. That would good goodness. That would be wonderful. Okay. Here. We'll see the privacy of their tefillin and So here's the workshop. You want to say hi? You want to give a little wave? <laughs> Shalom. Shalom Aleichem to everyone. Okay. Shalom. I see. He has here's the workshop. The mobile deal. workshop. So he he raises I... our presence once a year. And he comes here and he inspects uh, tefillin. These are some of his tools and and uh, people's mm -hmm. mezuzot to make sure that they are kosher. May I ask uh, where he gets his cloth? Uh oh, Aaron. My basement. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you did you hear the did no. you hear the answer? No, we missed it. From my basement. From his basement. <laughs> <he said. laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to go special places to get it. Yes. Where do I get it? Depends. Some of them I get from homemade by uh, Mendel all time. Some of it I get from Israel. Yeah. I get from Bach. Bach oh, Bach. one look at so he's opening up for everyone. He's opening up a part of to fill it. So wow, look at that. Well, he has a crowd over there with him. Yeah. Uh, this what we're seeing here, I have never <clears throat> seen. This is a privilege. Wow. That's what the inside looks like. Beautiful. Beautiful. And then you look for any cracks or breaks. Right. And and do you do you make your own deal or do you 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 find it or buy or there are makers of deal? Our father's uh, pages of life. Some I buy and sometimes I make. Here's what I found. Beautiful. So, how is that one? Kosher? Kosher. Kosher. Not possible. Are you looking for a possible one? No, no, we don't want any. No, but but he, I think he has one. You have so this was a mezuzah that was. It was a mezuzah. Yes, this was on someone's door. This was an outside mezuzah. This is what happened to it. Oh. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah, that possible for sure. You see the middle. You see the bottom line. Yes, it's tear torn. It's brittle. This is as a result of. Uh, it's probably exposure to the cold. So, do you place this in a Geniza? Right. Uh, that was that's a big mezuzah too. That's it's, that's a that's, huge uh, mezuzah yeah. scroll. Yeah, but I'm just showing you why they have to be checked every few years. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so could, for everybody who, who doesn't know here, that's with us here, uh, it's a, anything that is holy or sacred, once if, if it becomes like this, not usable anymore, it, it has to be stored in a special place, the Geniza. And he, and he you, said, you have some other tools here, Rabbi. I see you have... Um, he didn't explain to them what Geniza means. So, <laughs> yeah, so you hear me out. Can you explain what the Geniza is? A Geniza is is it, it's all it's a place for all you know sacred uh uh writings that have become worn out like uh a, a, maybe a Torah or a prayer book a siddur or 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 to fill in such as this and the most famous Geniza the Cairo Geniza uh they found 
you know, things going back 3,000 years, uh, uh, documents, very, very important. Um, uh, but the word itself, I don't know the derivation. For this, I need a, 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 a sofa. I don't need a sofa. Geniza means hidden away. Hidden away. Okay. And general, it means it means it's supposed to be buried. And so and, I, I see you have a quill here. Yeah, so that's the quill. Think, so can you repair? Are you able to repair some of the? If you find something that's puzzle, you can. Uh, you know, it's not only if I find something that's puzzle, but something that could be better. Use the quill. Use ink. It's an ink quill. It's also an ink quill. And we use it as a pen. We uh, put in the lines, whatever has to be done. And uh, what feather do you use? A turkey? No, goose. What? Goose. Goose. Born on a Thursday. <laughs> the, tradition, the tradition from previous generations to use geese feathers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so which, which um, paragraph is this? This is the second paragraph. So are these uh, Rashi's or uh, Rabina Thompson? This is Rashi. Okay. Did you have you ever um, checked at Shimshon Rabbas? Shimshon Rabba, yes. How many uh, in your career have you checked Shimshon Rabbas? How many people do you know? Where I haven't counted. Many. No, because very, very few people wear them. How do people uh, even wear them? I mean, they, they, you would you would do the Rashi, then you would do the Rabbeinu Tam, and then it, what would be the Pesukim that you would say for Shimshon Rab? This is listed in our Yom Yom from the Dev, for those that put on four pairs of them. The exact order what to say in them. I'm not 100% familiar what is said in in Shmushadab and Naivit. The difference between Shmushadab and Naivit is, as opposed to Rashi, and I've been in town to fill in, is the order of the parashas where you start from. Huh. The way we start is, on the right is Kaddish, Vayikriyach, Hashma, Vayim Shemoya. In Shemushirab, it's exactly the opposite. Kaddish is over here. Vayikriyach, Hashma, Vayim Shemoya. It reverses the order that we, that we do. So where, where did that uh, debate come from, the difference of opinion step it, from? It comes from interpretation of what the Gemara says. So the, it was just accepted that, Ra, that Rashi's opinion control. Mm -hmm. Well, most opinion was like Rashi. Yes, but there's a large amount that hold like Larbenetam, and that's why those more articulous. We do both, but Rabbeinutam actually have different psukim, right? No, they don't. No, it has the same psukim as Rashi, right? But how come when um, you say the Rabbeinu Tam Tefillin, you say uh, it's, it's you talk about Pesach? What? Even in the in the Chabad Sidur, when you say the Rabbeinu Tam, there's uh, there's the commandment about Pesach, right? So and and Yad and Rosh. Or or the lev and the rosh. I thought that the pesukim and Rabbeinu Tams were had those pesukim that you say. Am I wrong? So what are you doing there? 
He's concentrating. He's writing with Kava now. We'll explain after. Rashi and Rabbein the time they have the same exact parshies. The difference is in the order in which it's placed inside the box. That's all. That's it. That's it. Okay. And then the Shem Shem Rabbein the same. Yeah. Right. It's the order of the parshies. That's all. The same exact parshies. <laughs> I have a quick Shaila, if I could ask. Uh, are there any? Are there any? Anyone who holds that if you put on Rabbeinu Tom to fill in, but not Rashi to fill in, that you're Yotze the Mitzvah, or, or is it? I mean, uh, uh, is there anyone that holds like that? Rabbeinu Tam. Yeah, in other words, <laughs> you can put on Rabbeinu Tam and not Rashi, and you're still yay to the mitzvah of tefillin. Well, that's what the, he, uh, he just said. By, according to Rabbeinu Tam, you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there anyone that holds like that, Bizman Azeh, in, in modern times? Is there anyone who holds you can put on Rabbeinu Tam to fill in and not Rashi? No. I'd just be curious. No. The reason for that is because when we have disputes in Allah, it reaches a point where they come to a consensus. Until the consensus is reached, so then this is not incumbent on everyone. Once a consensus is reached, that's the way that Allah has decided. We decided according to Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch says that we, the halach is according to Rashi. Okay. Why? So the because, person that keeps the chumrah of putting on Rabbeinu Tam, they still recognize that there's a chava, they have an obligation to put on the Rashi as well. No one would do Rabbeinu Tam to the exclusion of Rashi, is what I'm saying. No. Because right. Allah is like Rashi. That's Baskin according to Shulchan Aruch. And the reason why the halach is like Rashi is because most rabbinic authorities, earlier rabbinic authorities, were talking about uh, the times of the Rishonim, which is about 800 years ago, 700 years ago. They decided, they, they agreed with Rashi over Rabbeinu Tam. And since they were a majority, so therefore, oh, right. their opinion was followed. Now, since there's a large amount of other rabbis who agree with Rabbeinu Tam, even okay. though they're in the minority, but there's a sizable amount that agree with Rabbeinu Tam, therefore, the, someone who's meticulous puts on both Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam. Oh, that was the solution. I see. Right, because it's not a small minority that agrees with Rabbeinu Tam. It's a large minority. Would there any, would there be anyone who says if you don't put on Rabbeinu Tam tefillin, you're not keeping the mitzvah of tefillin? No. So Kuliyam Allah Pligi Bali Suffolk, if you put on Rashi tefillin, you're all, you're good to go, basically. Yes, that's the custom of most Jews. It is that way because of that. Yes. Okay, good. But because Allah is like Rashi. This is wonderful. Everybody mm -hmm. here is learning. So we're to fill in. What is the oldest to fill in that you've ever uh, taken a look at? I don't know. I mean, I've seen some uh, when I was in Morocco, I saw to fill in that was, you know, over 100 years old. See, the problem, the film that I look at does not say a date on it, the date that it was written. <laughs> mm. But are, are there particular styles of the Batim that you can tell some were designed in an older era than uh, a newer? And perhaps the, the way it's worn, worn out, the condition of it. 
I mean, obviously there are other variables. I mean, how people keep them and care for them, but, but uh, can you tell an older pair from a, from a younger pair? Uh, well, there's no question telling an older pair from a younger pair. But how old, how old do you think the oldest pair that you've got? I don't know. There's no way that I could verify. I could only assume. Probably uh, 150, 200 years old. And were they um, were they European or were they Sephardi? Uh, both. I just checked the Paris film that was written on vellum. You know, what vellum is yes, of course. What is it? Vellum is, is is one of the many types of parchment. It's a, it's, a, it's a type of parchment, specific type. And you can right. have you can have vellum of different types. You can have uterine vellum, which which uh, is used in some Jewish mysticism for love magic, actually. But the use of vellum as parchment was customary in the communities a few hundred years ago. Oh. It's not a custom that they had within the last hundred years. Yeah. It's fallen so out I, of favor. So I would assume that it was a few hundred years old. was brought to me by a shliach. You know what a shliach is? No, that I don't know. Messenger, messenger. A what? A messenger. A messenger. Like a oh. shliach mitzvah, a messenger. Messenger, good. You know okay. what a chabad shliach is? A I, I, I know Mishalachim personally. <laughs> oh, you know them personally, okay. So it was brought to me by a shliach from Long Island. He says, you have to look at this. The, the, these twillim were brought into cipher. And he says, it has a lot of problems. He asked me to take it over to look, take a look at it to, to see. So I looked at it. I told him it doesn't have a lot of problems. Just that the sofa who who, who, who looked at it was not trained properly and didn't have a lot of experience. And the, the parashis was made out of vellum. Yeah. That's why he didn't know that it was what it was. And that vellum is kosher, and that was the meaning of the Svardim uh, a few hundred years ago. That was one of the problems. There were other problems that he had over there also. And I said that uh, uh, that those problems were that they had their custom was like, according to a particular, it was like, like Rashi, not like uh, others. The other uh, in and this was their custom, that's all. <laughs> but he didn't know them as far as the communities that they didn't always adhere to that Ashkenazic customs. So it was strange Ashkenazically over here in uh, over here in New York area, but uh, he wasn't familiar with uh, with ancient Sephardic customs. So it was the cloth itself that he uh, he just thought wasn't it wasn't was just it wasn't just the cloth. It was other things also the batim and the way the parshas were written. A certain thing that well, it's just uh, different. He was it looked unusual to him. That's right. Yeah. So and, when you have to train suffering that were not trained by suffering from previous generations, so they don't know because they were lacking the training, the tradition to hand it down from generation to generation. 
And how many generations uh, has been handed in? Have you been handed down in terms of? Uh, well, the software, I, the software I learned from was an expert software. He learned from a previous generation. He had extensive training, and he gave us extensive training. So he was well worth versed in all the ins and outs, so and the various customs, and the variations between one community and another community. So he was familiar with it, and he and he trained us, and he taught us that. When you say us, were you in a, a large classroom, or were you one on one? No, we're talking about all the students. Right. So how many students were in your class? One. You? Me. Just you. Train <laughs> at a time. Train. One at a time. Okay. One at a time. It's called apprenticeship, shimush. And so how long did, did it take your apprenticeship? Oh, well, half a year sitting by him in his house. And then continuing education afterwards. That's the minimum what you have, what, what, what cipher has to be trained in underneath another, uh, underneath another cipher. Huh. I say us, I mean all his various students. He had me at one time, he had other students at different times. And, and what, at, at what point do they say, okay, you're a sofa. At what point? The time that he decides that you know enough, that you're able to function independently. Okay. So this, it's not a time dependent. It's complete. It's completely dependent on your your skill and knowledge base. That's correct. Okay. So some people could you have to have enough. You have to have enough capability to function independently, not under his watchful eye and relying on that if any new things come up that you're unfamiliar with it, you'll consult with him. Sure. Like a, any an expert, a doctor or a lawyer or, a, or yeah, of course. That's correct. But what happened is like this story which I told you about this sofa was unfamiliar because he didn't have anyone who could consult with. He didn't realize that he had to consult with someone. That he doesn't know everything. He wasn't trained in everything. And that's his job to know and to have who to consult with. No, um, aside from the distraction, uh, the obvious distraction right now that we're having while you're working, if you're working alone, a Where's your mind? I mean, where is my mind? So as you're as you're examining, uh, as you're opening the tefillin, as you're looking at the parsha, parshiot, as you're sewing the batim back up, how do you discipline your mind? I don't know what you mean by discipline your mind. So so fair so. I mean, you're not thinking about the Yankees game or the Mets game as you're doing you're this. concentrating on what you're looking at. You're looking what you're looking at. What you're doing basically is you are reading it and you are looking out for anything which is not normal. Huh. Wow. Thank you very much, Rob Cooperman. Thank you what very you much for your you time. You were asking me a question about what was I was doing on that previous mm -hmm. power show with the with taking a knife and scratching. Yeah. Because there was too much ink on a dollar. So I took it off. The extra ink that should be. With the exacto knife, yeah. That it should be as wide as the other letters. Yeah, you can scratch off. That's right. Yeah, I believe. Yes. 
If it's kosher, you can scratch it off. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you're not allowed to, f to form letters by scratching. Right. But if you have a letter that's already kosher, you're allowed to scratch off extra ink. Thank you so much for okay, thank allowing you so much. us to, to observe you. That's this is a this this is a real privilege. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got it. Sorry, we got back here. Back. All right. So here's uh, here's the folks who are uh, observing there. This is Zoom. Yeah, it's a Zoom. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rabbi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, Rabbi. Okay. Lila Tov. Lila Tov. Okay, right. everybody. Lila Tov for me too. Okay. Oh, for us too. I'm on the East Coast, so we're in East Coast time. It's very late. I'm on East Coast. Time. I'm we're waking... in Florida. Yeah. Oh, Where's... you're in the promised land. We're in Florida. Florida. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Thank All right. you, everyone. Lila Tov, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good night. All right. Good night. Lila Tov.